City News Bonanza in Winter Garden. Orange County Teachers Union is fighting for higher pay. West Orange has sports talent. And the Winter Garden Christmas Golf Parade gets postponed by a near tragedy. And the lesson we should learn from it. The date is December 16th, 2021. We're going to go through these stories and more. Welcome to West Orange on the Go. My name is Austin Arthur, and this is where we do local news and comment. And when I say local news, I mean hyper-local. West Orange, this is your news. We begin in 10 seconds. You're listening to West Orange on the Go. Brought to you by the West Orange Times and Observer. Hosted by Austin Arthur. West Orange on the go. In Winter Garden City News, commissioners approved an Advent Health donation agreement and the sum of $1.2 million. Now this is to the city of Winter Garden for the development of the holistic health and wellness campus at Tucker Ranch. The commissioners also approve a recommendation to repair and mitigate the deterioration of the Stony Brook West Golf Club property and ensure its preservation. They also voted to allow the construction of awnings at the Exchange Building for outdoor dining at the upcoming Italian Pizza Establishment. Awnings will be constructed on the sides facing Plant Street and South Lakeview Avenue. A recommendation was approved to award Dale Beasley's construction company the contract for the North Boyd Street parking lot improvement project in the amount of nearly $698,000. The company was one of six to submit proposals by the deadline. Finally, during the same commission meeting, the city leaders approved the redesign of the city's utility payment website through a new contract. The action will prevent a major problem, which would have left citizens without a web-based payment system at the start of the new year. Now, as a resident of Winter Garden, I did receive a citizen email blast on this topic. Now, in the email, they stated the new system will be up at the end of the month and that the old links to the payment portal will not work. So make sure you go on to the city website if you're a resident of Winter Garden to get the updated link. And you do that by clicking the little water droplet icon right on the city's homepage. And now this, the season of giving is often associated with food drives, red kettles, and toy collection bins. But a local nonprofit is bringing awareness to the needs of foster families and asking the community to help bring the holiday spirit into their homes. The Orange Seminole Foster Children's Association offers a range of assistance for foster and adoptive parents and was founded in 1986. To that end, with their Christmas program, each child within a foster household, whether they're biological or fostered, is allowed to request seven wishes. The child's first name, clothing sizes, and wishes are included on a tag. Those willing to donate take the tags and purchase the gifts. Many area businesses accept multiple tags and create an angel tree so employees and customers can donate. Now, the full details of how you can get involved are in this week's paper. Next story, Winnemere resident Jake Karsten has spent more time at the controls of an aircraft than most kids his age have spent behind the wheel of a car. The 15-year-old Olympia High School sophomore recently logged his first solo flight in a glider and is chartering a course to a career in the U.S. Air Force. The minimum age to pilot a powered plane without supervision is 16 years old, while 14 years old is the minimum age to fly solo in a glider. Now, this full story is available in this week's Southwest Orange Paper. But you can also go to orangeobserver.com to check it out there. And don't forget, that's what you do. You go to orangeobserver.com, you subscribe. There's lots of things to subscribe to so you can stay informed with your local community. we got the big red boxes all over town. They're free newspaper inside. So you just rip one of those things open and you get your newspaper and you go on your way. Now, that's the way I like to do it whenever I can. Sometimes I just get the paper even if I've already read it. Just because I want to hold it. I want to look at the pictures. I want to feel it in my hands. So you can do that too. Look for the big red boxes. You can also do what you're doing right now. Listen to me, West Orange on the go. Now this is a little different. This is local news and comment. So you'll see it's kind of 
Sometimes it's kind of editorial, if you will. It's a little subjective sometimes because I place my own comments. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, you know, you check me out here just as you're doing right now. So let's go on to some education news. Let's deal with Orange County. The Orange County Public School Systems recently announced the impasse hearing with the Orange County Classroom Teachers Association, or CTA, will take place after the winter break. The CTA first declared an impasse in bargaining over both compensation and benefits in July. The impasse then went before a special magistrate who heard the case this fall. Because OCPS and CTA could not agree, the final decision will now fall onto the infamous Orange County School Board. Now, according to data from OCPS, the average salary for an OCPS teacher is $52,334 annually. The school board also says it contributes on average an additional $19,877 per teacher for benefits. OCPS said compared to other schools in the region, it has the highest average compensation. According to the teachers union, an experienced six-year teacher earns only $609 more than a new teacher. Now, there is a very thorough and excellent review of this issue at the orangeobserver.com by the talented and very able Annabelle Sykes. So if you're interested in this issue, I encourage you to go check it out because she has laid out all the details. All right, it goes into great depth. So I want you to log online and check that out. Let's go ahead and dive right into our sports high five for this week. This is our hyper local sports. Number one, Foundation Academy's competitive cheer team competed at the Hornet Classic December 11th at Bishop Moore Catholic High School. The team took first place in the medium varsity non-tumbling division. The competition also ran a toy drive for the holiday season. Number two, Windermere Prep senior quarterback Zane Fulmore was invited to compete at the Florida High School Shrine Bowl All-Star Classic December 11th. He was Windermere Prep's only representative at the game, which featured some of the best private school players in the area. Number three, two Olympia cheerleaders received the honor of a lifetime last week when they were selected to represent Olympia at the 80th annual Pearl Harbor Memorial Parade in Honolulu. Number four, Horizon Girls weightlifting team notched out several top finishes in a dual meet with Dr. Phillips December 8th. Sophomore Carmen Simmons finished first in the 119-pound division, and freshman Mackenzie Ducan took first in the 139-pound division. Number five, the West Orange and Olympia girls soccer teams went head-to-head December 8th, with the Warriors coming away with a 3-1 victory. Freshman Georgie McNeil scored two goals to pace West Orange against the Titans. She has been the only freshman to start every game for the Warriors since this season. Now, in addition to this high five for the week, a big congratulations to 11 athletes from West Orange High, 17 athletes from Windermere High, and an additional athlete from Foundation Academy. This month, these West Orange athletes all signed their letters of intent for various college sport teams throughout the nation. A lot of talent in West Orange County. Now, speaking of which, you've heard the name Foundation Academy a couple times this week in the sports. And I want to tell you they are a sponsor of this program. I was at my daughter's school just the other day, and I told them the real story of St. Nicholas. The real man, the story, what he did, how he did it for his faith. A great faith leader. And I think that Foundation Academy is creating a lot of faith leaders here in our community. I encourage you to check them out. Foundation Academy, where character matters. And now to the final story. The hit-and-run suspect was apprehended in downtown Winter Garden Sunday, December 12th. As residents waited along Plant Street to view the Winter Garden Christmas golf cart parade. The incident, which took place at about 6 p.m., canceled the rest of the parade, which had begun about 30 minutes earlier. A vehicle was approaching Plant Street during the parade at a high speed. An officer tried to slow down the vehicle and the driver of the vehicle accelerated toward the officer, almost striking him. The driver continued to accelerate, striking another vehicle traveling in the same direction. Now, according to eyewitness accounts, the hit-and-run occurred near Matthew's Steakhouse, 
And after the car became disabled, it came to a stop at City Hall, where off-duty police officer Mario Lewis was waiting for the parade with his family. According to Lewis, the suspect exited the car and attempted to flee the scene after his vehicle slid to a stop. Lewis stated that the driver narrowly missed a lot of people. Then he got out of the car and started to run. Now that's when Lewis gave chase, ultimately drawing his weapon and announcing himself as an off-duty police officer to the suspect. Now after this, the suspect laid himself to the ground. Officer Lewis holstered his weapon and detained him until Winter Garden police arrived moments later. The suspect later admitted he ran because of an outstanding warrant. A female and two children remained in the vehicle. The female was also arrested after admitting to an outstanding warrant. According to police reports, the driver was arrested for an invalid driver's license, possession of narcotics without a prescription, aggravated assault on a law enforcement officer, child neglect, and his outstanding warrant. Now, with the female suspect also being arrested, the children were turned over to family and DCF was notified. So this is a pretty, a pretty incredible story. And it could have ended very differently. You know, especially after what we know occurred in Wisconsin with the Christmas parade there. Evil is real and we must be vigilant. But with that, I am very happy to hear that they have rescheduled the parade. We must not live in fear. So this Sunday evening, the parade will be happening and I will be in attendance. I encourage you all to join me. But in addition to the reminder that we must not live in fear, let's revisit how this thing ended. You have an off-duty police officer in civilian clothing with his concealed weapon right there in the crowd. He sees what's happening. You know, he sees what's going on. There's no way of knowing in that moment what the intentions of the driver are. There's no way of knowing anything. The only thing you can do is decide to act. And he did. Drawing his firearm to stop this crazy man. Well, we have no way of knowing what would have happened after if he wasn't stopped. You know, I heard that after he apprehended the suspect, Mario Lewis, the off-duty police officer, just went back to his family and sat down as if nothing happened. Apparently, his wife, Tracy, a friend of mine, had to ask him where he went off to. And then he explained the situation. Humble. I say Officer Lewis is a hero, a community hero. It teaches us you never know who you're sitting next to. It could be great evil next to you, coming toward you. But there can also be great heroism. We must humble ourselves to recognize both. And to be grateful for those brave enough who are ready to utilize their bravery to help others. Thank you, Officer Lewis. You're my kind of guy. And I'm grateful to have you as a fellow resident of our great community. Officer Lewis, we need more men like you. This has been Austin Arthur with the West Orange Times and Observer. And until next week, have a happy and blessed weekend. West Orange on the Go is brought to you by the West Orange Times and Observer. Hosted by Austin Arthur. West Orange on the go.